This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, I'm going to have Shabbos. Bruchem Abbaim. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to our Shira on Tefillah. Our Shira on Tefillah is sponsored by Rabbi Sao Rose of Los Angeles. With Nishmas, his brother, Tzvi Ben Levi Yitzchak, Neshama Shnev and Aliyah, Biyomel Tzioshe for his whole family. Ad Bias Goyal Tzadak. Now, uh, before we begin, Be'ezus Hashem, we're starting a new program. It's called Shoyna Halachos, Mishnah Bura, Daf HaShavua. We're going to give it a shot to do the Seder Monday through Thursday at 9 a.m. It will be on Zoom. It will be about 12 minutes. Uh, the uh, Shiram will be recorded on Torah anytime. They'll be on podcasts and other venues as well. Please join us. It's really a, a very special opportunity to gain clarity in Halacha Lamaisa. Okay, but uh, today we're going to be learning uh, in Yonet Tfila, And we're going to learn about Parak Kuf Mem Tes, the, five, the second to last Halalukah. And we know that there are five parts of Psuke de Zimra, which Rabbi Schwab says corresponds to Negadelcha, Unashabechacha, Unafa'ercha, Venazkir Shimcha, Venamlichacha. These are the five parts of Psuke de Zimra. Negadelcha, we discussed at length, is, corresponds to Gidol. Gidol means braiding, where we take various Psukim and Tanakh and we braid them together to create ideas. We braid together Psukim of Rachamim, of Oiz, of Bitachain, of Hoshia, of Nekama, and so forth. Then we're up to Nishabechacha, Nishabechacha is where Meshabeach, our Matzav in this world. Let's say, for example, somebody buys a bargain suit in a basement in Bar Park, and it's Mamisha Shmata, and he asks you, Nu, how do I look? And you're Meshabeach, you say you look like a million bucks. So you're taking something which is a Dava Ra, and you're making it good, Toiv Be'enav. That's Ashrei. Ashrei, where even if uh, life has challenges and setbacks, we, ta- we say, Toiv Hashem Lakoil, Bechol Yom Avarcheka. But now, Rabbi say we're up to Nefaircha, Pear, Crown. We're going to talk about the crowning element of world history, the Achras Hayomim. And there are five parts of this saga in history. Part number one is before the coming of Mashiach. That's the first Hallelujah where we say, Altiv Techuv Nedivim. Do not trust in Nedivim. Don't trust in false messiahs. Beven Adam Shein Lai Seshua. Ashrei Shekel Yaakov Ezra. Trust only in the Lord and the Rebani Shalaylam. Then the next Tehillim Perak Kuf Mem Zayin. We have Kuf Mem Vav, Zayin Ches Tes, and Kuf Nun. Kuf Mem Zayin talks about the time right before the coming of Mashiach, where Boine Yerushalayim Hashem, Nidche Yisrael Yechanes, where God is Haroyfe Lishvurei Lev. Then last week we learned about the capital of when Mashiach actually comes. Now, when Mashiach comes, we act as the conductor and we turn to the sun and the moon and the stars and we turn to the earth and so forth. And under these circumstances, we sing the song of Mashiach. Now let's just pay attention. Ashrei, we say, Tihilas Hashem Yidaber Pi Vivar Kal Basar. Ashrei is the praise of the body. But then we move on to the next Hallelujah, 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 Nafshi Hashem. That's the Nefesh. And then uh, we say Ki Toiv Zarm Lekenu Ki Noam Navsila Boine Yushalayim Hashem. We move up to the the higher part of the uh, the Ruach. And now we talk about Ruach Hakodesh. We're up to Perk Kuf Mem Tes. Says Rab Schwab now. The Meshoyer David Amelech is praising Hashem through Ruach HaKodesh. Because after Mashiach comes, all of mankind will unite with Klal Yisrael to speak about the Neshama. And we say, God, we're going to sing a new song to you. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes you hear some of these new you know, music albums that come out, and almost by every song you said, where did I hear that one before? Where did I hear that one before? Where did I hear that one before? And the answer is, you heard it three months ago on a different album. All the, all the tunes, they sound exactly the same. So, do you think after David HaMelech, 
wrote 147 chapters of Tehillim, 148 chapters of Tehillim. He gets up to chapter 149 and he says, Ah, oh, Shir Chadash, I have a new song. David, a new song? After 148 chapters, you think you really have a new song? Rabbi Schwab points out that seven times in Tehillim, David HaMelech says, Shir Chadash. And this is the final time. After this time, this Mizmar, David HaMelech said, after 148 Mizmarim, says the Rabbi Schwab, you could say, what's new about this song? All the other songs speak about the coming of Mashiach and the building of the Beis HaMikdash. But all of those songs are about those who saw with their own eyes how their tefillahs were answered and the tefillahs of all the generations before them. And they were zoicha to Yiru Einenu V'yismach Libenu V'sagal Nafshenu. They were zoicha to V'sechazenu Einenu V'sechazenu Einenu V'sechazenu But here's the deal. All the previous, whoever is singing songs when Mashiach comes, will be from the minute few who actually were zoicha to see the culmination of the Galos. But what about the millions of Jews that lay in the ground who never were zoicha to the Geula and the Toiva? They only saw the Tzaros of the Galos. They never saw the Geula. So when they get up in the Tchias HaMesim, they will sing a Shir Chadash. It's a brand new song because... The song of Mashiach, okay, people sing it. They were zoichet to see the Geula. But those who lay dormant in the ground, they only saw the Tzara. They only saw the Golas. They didn't see anything beyond that. Now this Mizmar is a Shavach, a Shavach v'hoida for Tchias HaMesim. The fourth Hallelujah is a Shavach v'hoida of Tchias HaMesim. Like the Pasuk says, Yiraninu Amish Kavaisam. They will sing on their beds. Like the Navi says. Right? What, do, what does it mean in this Mizmar? Yiraninu Amish Kavaisam. They will sing on their beds. What, what song does somebody sing on their bed? We say, Yalzu chasidim b'chavoid, yiraninu amish kavaisam. That is a reference to that which the, the Navi Yeshaya describes as the resurrection of the dead. Hakitsu v'raninu shoich afar. Or in Daniel, it says, Rabbim yishenei arasar, yakitsu elu l'chaye oilam. Ve'ela l'charafois oilam. There will be a resurrection where some will get up for eternal life and some will get up for eternal uh, ruination. This is what it means. Yiraninu amishkavaisam. When they get up, they will be lying on their beds and they will open their eyes and they will rub their eyes and they will say, Oh, wow, God woke me up. So this is a very new song. This is a song no one ever sang before. Because all the prophets only prophesied about Mashiach, but about Tchias HaMesim. Nobody ever saw that. That's a brand new song. Meaning all the other songs are old compared to this. Because even though maybe certain events didn't happen yet, but the prophets foresaw them. But Tchias Hamisim, the prophets never foresaw. So therefore this is a brand new song that they're going to sing. Sher Chadash, Yeraninu Amish Kavoisam. It's a song of the restoration of the soul of Hamachazir Neshamais Lefgarim Eisim. Then the Mizmar continues. So that's one important thing you need to know. The second to last Hallelujah is a new song, a song no one ever sang before. Why is it new? It's new because it's about the resurrection of the dead that even the prophets did not foresee. And we say, Tehilasoi Bikal Chasidim. Even the Chasidei Umay Sa'olam will be part of the resurrection because they have a chilek in Olam Haba. We say, Tehilasoi Bikal Chasidim. That even refers to Chasidei Umay Sa'olam. However, there will be a unique dimension of Tchias HaMesim for Klal Yisrael. Yismach Yisrael be'oisav b'nei tziyon yogilu v'malkam. Tchias HaMesim is much more designated to Klal Yisrael than the Goyim. Because Chazal say, Kol Yisrael yesh lahem chilek l'aylum haba. Tchias 
And by the way, Chazal say on the pasuk of Tchias Hamisim, Hakitzu Veranenu Shoich Nei Afar Kital Oirois Talecha, that this is the dew that Hakadosh Baruch Hu is destined to be Mechayim Isim, and the dew of the Oirois is the dew of the Torah, which is Mechayim Isim, which is only applicable to Jews and not for Gentiles. I would like to humbly add the following idea. We start off by saying Tehila Sai Bekal Chasidim. God's praise is among the righteous. We say God's praise is among the righteous. And then we say Yismach Yisrael Ba'oisav B'nai Tzioin Yagid Ramakam. What's the difference between Yisrael and B'nai Tzioin? So I want to suggest as follows. The Gemara says in the end of Masech the Tainas, Kol HaMesabel al Yushalayim, Zoyche v'roya b'yeshuasai. Anyone who is Masabel on Yushalayim will be Zoyche and see its salvation. What does that mean, will be Zoyche and see its salvation? Says the Ritva, that the Brisa there says, their sins will be on their bones. The Ritva says an amazing th- chiddush that those who are misabel on Yushalayim will have a special tchias hamesim to be able to be zoicha to see the imais hamashiach. That there will be two tchias hamesims. There will be tchias hamesims for the righteous who deserve it who are zoichet to tchias hamesim because of the good deeds. But aside from the, those who are generally righteous, there will be a special tchias hamesim for those who mourned Yerushalayim, for those who, who were mesabel of, over Yerushalayim. And that is a second tchias hamesim. And by the way, the Reb Shlomo Brevda points out that in the Kinnos we say on Tisha B'av, we say, Shoichnei Kevarim, those who lay in their graves, Mechakim Umetzapim Liyam Yishacha, who await the day of your salvation, Oz Yitzmechu Yichyo Yishenecha, then it will sprout and they will come to life. That is a reference to the idea that those who are Mesabel al Yushalayim, those who already died, will be Zoichet to a special Tchias Hamesim, um, in the times of the Achras Hayamim. So I would like to suggest that this parak of Tehillim that talks about Tchias HaMesim, first we say, Yismach Yisrael B'Yosav, that refers to the general Tchias HaMesim of the righteous. But there's a special Tchias HaMesim of B'nai Tzion, Yagilu V'Malkam. The B'nai Tzion. Who are the B'nai Tzion? What are B'nai Tzion? B'nai Tzion are those who yearned for the Geula, who yearned for the Binyan Yerushalayim, who yearned for Tzion, the Binyan Beis HaMikdash. They will be Zoycha to a special Tchias HaMesim. Now, Rabbi Schwab has a very interesting question. We say, Yismach Yisrael Be'oisav. Israel should rejoice with its makers, plural. It should say, Be'oisehu. Israel should rejoice with the one who made it. What's the one who made them? What's its, excuse me, what's its makers? There's only one God. Even though in general, Eloi Kim is always Lush and Rabbim. And kings always speak of themselves in Lashon Rabbim. But Reb Schwab quotes from Shamshin Fal Hirsch that on the Pasuk, Ki Oisayich, to teach that God created man with many makings. First He created us in the times of Egypt, when He took us out of Mitzrayim, and He created us again, Limais HaMashiach. So, so to speak, God is our, cre- He created us, our makers, because He made us twice. I would humbly suggest a little bit of an alternate approach. If you remember Rashi in the beginning of Bereshus, Rashi is bothered why by the creation of the animals it says Vayitzer with one Yud, and by the creation of man it says Vayitzer with two Yuds. So Rashi says that God created man with two creations, one for Olam Hazeh and one for Tchias HaMesim. So Tchias HaMesim was a, uh, a different, required a second creation. 
So especially in this chapter about the resurrection of the dead, we refer to God as Yismach Yisav Be'oisav. Not only God who created us originally, but when He created us, He put in us a second creation for our future existence. Now, we say praise God with a circle. What's a circle? We know the Gemara says at the end of Tainus, God is destined to make a circle for the tzaddikim and he's going to sit among them and each one of them is going to point with their finger like it says bayoy mahu the omar bayoy mahu hine alaykenu za that it, in the future in the world of the souls in the world of resurrection of the dead the tzaddikim will have a hargasha and a recognition of Hashem a tangible like we started today there are three things Hashem had a point to Moshe and say, Moshe, ze ma'ase ha'manoira. Moshe, ze yitnu. Moshe, ha'chadish ha'ze lochem. But we will one day say to God, ze Hashem kivinu loi. Ve'omar ba'yim ha'zu, hine eloikeinu ze. Now in this world, we can't reach such a level of clarity where we could point to God and say, the Chavetz Chaim explained that, you know, when you're dancing in the circle, the one in the outer rim of the circle, the person, he thinks that he's the closest to the midpoint of the circle, and he's directly opposite the midpoint. But the guy on the right or the guy on the left, nah, they don't have as good of a view as he does. But then when he takes a few steps ahead, and he's standing where his friend is standing, he sees that he's in the same place. He didn't move. And then he realizes that every place on the perimeter of the circle is just as close to the center point. So this is what it means. Hashem's ultimately going to make a circle for the tzaddikim that each one's going to point and recognize that he's not the only one who recognizes HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that everybody equally recognizes Hashem. And Rav Schwab quotes Rav Levi Yosef Breuer, that the Indian of Hakafais on Simchas Torah, which is a Pele, I understand the Hoishana, Yisuchar Zechel Mikdash, that they would encircle the Mizbeach with the Luv and the Arava, or when the Sefer Torah is on the Bima, and we encircle the Sefer Torah with the Dalan Minim. But on Simchas Torah, there's no Sefer Torah on the Bima. We encircle the Bima, but we're holding the Sefer. So what in the world are we doing? So he would explain that on Simchas Torah, we are anticipating and yearning for the L'asid Yava Lavai, that someone who's holding the Sefer Torah, he's identifying with the Torah. He's one of the Tzaddikim who's going around the Bima, which is empty. That represents HaKadosh Baruch Hu, which Rebbe Hashem is Lamala Mehasagaseinu. And therefore the Bimas Merames on HaKadosh Baruch Hu Be'emtza, and we're pointing, and no wonder then why we say in the Psukim before the Hakafais, the Omar Bayoim Ha'hu, Hine Eloikeinu Zeh. We're referencing the time that we'll be able to point to HaKadosh Baruch Hu in the middle. And we say, Ki Roitza Hashem Ba'amay, because now the time has come, that HaKadosh Baruch was awaiting and Hashem was going to rejoice with, that Tchitz HaMesim was the absolute kiyom of Yisem Li Segula Mikol HaAmim. That there's nothing like it among all the Ame Haaretz. And then we say, Yifoyer Anovim Bishua. So a Chidosh just occurred to me, why you fire Anovim be Yeshua? The Siyat of the we can explain as follows. What do Anovim have to do with it? You ready for this? You're going to be very happy when you hear this Chiddush. Everyone turn on your screens. I want to see the smile. You're going to love this. You're going to... The Gemara says that any kol ha-mezgoya ein afaroi ninar You see, I see the smiles already. I didn't even say it. Ein afaroi ninar letchias ha-mesim that the arrogant will not have the resurrection of the dead. That only humble people have resurrection. So now it, it comes out very beautiful. Yefoyer Anovim Yeshua. The Anovim will be exalted in salvation. Now Yeshua is 
a reference to salvation from danger. Marv Rabbi said, but what is the greatest salvation of all? The final salvation, Yeshua HaSoifis, the final salvation. You know when that will come? That will come at the time of the resurrection of the dead. When the tzaddikim will get the, the greatest salvation of all to be B'nai Olam Haba. Say, really? Is the resurrection of the dead the great salvation? Yes! Mechaye mi simata! Rav Lahoshia! Rav Lahoshia. The final resurrection is called Rav Lahoshia. Melech meimis umechaye umatzmiach Yeshua! The salvation will come when Hashem is Mechaye Mesim. Why? Why is that the great salvation? Because we know that even though a person is judged every single year on Rosh Hashanah, but the ultimate judgment, the Yoim HaGadol V'Anoira, La'asid Lavoi, even the Tzadikim are worried about that. Shmuel Anovi was afraid. His Shmuel Anovi said to Shol HaMelech, Shol, why'd you wake me up? I, Shmuel said, Maybe they're waking me up for the final din, the din, the Yoim HaDin HaGadol. So you'll say, what's so scary about that? person's already judged after 120. And this is an idea that we spoke about this past Rosh Hashanah. But Rav Aaron Cutler brings um, that after 120 years, when you stand before judgment, so they judge you for what you did, and what you could have done, and what you should have done. But, it's a limited judgment because they can't determine the effect that you had in this world and the hashba you had in this world and all the outcome and how you influenced your neighbors, your family, your children, your wife. For example, let's say you told somebody, uh, Rabbi Ed, why don't you come on the shir on Friday and learn a little bit about tefillah? So, let's say a person encouraged someone to come to a shir. And after they leave this world, the person they encourage, he's still going to the shir. So there's no way to judge the person yet because the ramifications, the reverberations of his actions have not yet concluded. And therefore, not until the Yoim Hadin HaGadov HaNoira in the end of days can God make the final decision. Is this person a Ben Olam Abba or is this person not a Ben Olam Abba? Or let's say a person calls the Chil Hashem. And somebody learned from your actions. All of these things will not come until the end of days. And that is why the greatest salvation in the world is somebody is Yatsa B'Shalom from the Yoim Adin HaGadov HaNoira. They have achieved the Yeshua Gedoyla. And his chilek will be liyoyim shekulay arach. And this is the final crown, the final crown of human achievement is to be zoyche to'olam abba, not after 120, but in the achris hayomim, when, when the book is closed, when the, inf- when the influence and the reverberations of your actions are able to be tallied up, and you'll be given the final crown of anovim bishua. Now, Rabbi Schwab says that Anovim, because the more humble someone is and the more he realizes his own unworthiness, that even though a person might say, I may have done many, many mitzvahs in my lifetime, but I'm very afraid of the influence I may have had on others that might not have been good, that will produce a greater Yeshua. But I think we could add very beautifully, namely, that Tchias HaMesim is specifically given to the humble. And then we say, Yalzu Chasidim Chavayr. All the righteous, even Gentiles, they will sing on their bed when they awaken and they're lying there in their kever and they realize God has brought them back to life. The praises of the Almighty in their throats and a double-edged sword in their hand. Why is the praise in their throats? Why not on their lips? Because... It will be so spontaneous. It will be so in their heart. Even before the song emanates to their lips, they will already be emoting a praise of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Now, Rav Schwab says that the song 
of the praise of God, that is the double-edged sword. They won't need a sword against the Goyim. They won't need to take revenge against the Goyim. The praise of God, Roimimois Kel Begroinum, is the Chera of Pipiois Biadam. Lasus Nekama Bagoyim. And God will do revenge against the Gentiles when at the time of Tchias HaMesim. Because as we know, there will be two, there will be the resurrection for the Tzaddikim and resurrection for the Rishaim. And the Rishaim will be resurrected for their ultimate punishment. That's why we ask God. We know you're the only one who can bring revenge. Nikoim le'eneinu nikmas dama vadecha shafach. Not that we will do, take the revenge, God will. And the reason why we can't take revenge is just like we can't fathom the great reward of the tzaddikim, we cannot understand the oimek hadin of the rishayim. And we say as follows, La'asos nekama bagoyim. Not la'asos nekama bigoyim, bagoyim. The well-known guy. Toichei balumim, the well-known nations. Which means, it doesn't mean every guy will be destroyed, every nation, but there'll be well-known goyim. The Germans, the... our cousins in the Middle East. There'll be well-known goyim that will get their just desserts. Not all of them, but the well-known ones. They know who they are. Lesser malchei and bezikim, they will tie up their, their honorable ones in chains. Their honorable ones in, in chains of iron. They will go lit for eternal ruination. Now, we learned two weeks ago one interpretation of La Sesba Mishpat Kasov that whenever a punishment is written, it's always more severe, it's always more um, it's always more dangerous, it's always uh, with uh, more stringency, because the Tarsh Shabbat is always more strict than the Tarsh Shabbat Peh. But Roshwab says like this The punishment we want to mete out to the Gentiles is the punishment of the Torah and the Nevi'im. Not a punishment of this world. Do you think, you think it's enough just to punish the Rishayim with an electric chair? But if we give, let's say we would give Eichmann the electric chair, we gave Hitler the electric chair. They got off easy. Only dying one time. After they killed six million and they took away babies from mothers. They should just die and that's it? That's too lenient of a punishment. Says Rav Schwab, you think the fact that they hanged Eichmann, that, that's the equivalent of one sa'aka, of one little boy who was a tzaddik amor when they pained him with Yisurim Neirayim. No, God will punish Eichmann for every cry and every scream and every torture and every tsar. And like the Mishnah Bura brings in his Akdama, and if God needs to bring Eichmann back to life to punish him again, he will do so. The Mishabura writes, God will reconstitute the molecules of the Rishayim to punish them again and again and again and again. We have no way to understand that. All we could do is we're going to praise Hashem and we say, Hashem, you, were, you do your thing. And when Hashem punishes the Rishayim, Hadar Hu L'chol chasidav. It will be an honor to the righteous. The righteous don't have to do anything. They will witness nekayim le'ineinu nikmas dam avadecha hashafach. That is the conclusion of the penultimate parak of Tehillim. La asos bahem mishpat kasuv hadar hu l'chol chasidav. It will bring, bring glory to all the righteous. Merv Rabbi that is the second to last chapter of Tehillim. Bezos Hashem, uh, we hope to continue. Thank you everybody for joining. Wishing everybody a wonderful Shabbos, a wonderful Rosh Chodesh. Bezos Hashem, if you want to join us beginning next week, Monday morning, 9 a.m., uh, Mishnah Bura, the Hakdama this week, please uh, join us. Wishing everyone Bracha Vatzlacha and a wonderful Shabbos. Kaltov. Chodesh Tov. Chodesh Tov.
Call to everyone. Be well. Shabbat Shalom. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.